Hey guys, it's Backpack Jack. I'm out here today in the beautiful, sunny, shady backyard, and we are doing camp prep again. Backpack Boy and I are going camping this weekend with a couple good friends. We're going to be at a cottage, but we're going to be doing some day hikes, and we're going to be doing a lot of fishing, and there's going to be a lot of good food. Everybody else is responsible for bringing all our main stuff for dinners, and uh, the boys are responsible for bringing stuff for breakfast, which is probably going to mean bacon. So I've supplemented that a little bit with what I'm bringing, but I thought I would show you what I'm bringing to prepare a couple of shore lunches, a couple of campfire snacks, maybe a couple of emergency breakfasts for those of us that are too old to just eat bacon. So I'm gonna add these three bags to my kit. This one's got food in it. This one's got fire in it. And this one has got cooking utensils in it. So I'm gonna open them up each and show you First what's inside. Little pouch here. I've got ways to cook. And we're going to be at a cottage. We're going to have a stove, an oven. We're going to have a barbecue, and we're also going to have a big fire pit. So that's going to be our main cooking methods. But we're going to do hopefully a shore lunch and either another shore lunch or a trail lunch. So this is what we're going to be cooking on. I'm expecting there to be a fire ban and to be no open fire. So I'm bringing my classic trail stove from Primus couple little gas canisters. These are brand new ones. And then, just in case there's not a fire ban, I'm bringing my little Ikea hobo stove to do a little cook up and do it a little safer in the bush. That is what I'm going to be using primarily for cooking. Now every one of us is going to be bringing our day hike kits and we've all got either an Nesbitt stove or a canteen stove in them. So we're all going to have individual ways to boil water, do a brew up, make coffee, make hot chocolate if they want to whatever, make craft dinner for the kids. They've got their food in their packs and everything. So this is just for group meals. I'm gonna do a couple meals, which I'll show you inside of here. And this is gonna be our method. We're either gonna be hiking on foot or we're gonna be in the boat. So I'm not worried about the bulk of this stuff and this will be pared down. I'll only bring one meal at a time per adventure. So I'll get in here now and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna use to cook with on our fire. A little GI butt pack and in here I've got the utensils I'm going to be using to cook with and also some water purification. Um, just I've got a couple of carabiners on here. It allows me to attach it to a pack pretty easily. Um, we can also attach stuff on the side of your water bottles and whatnot. This little guy here can hook on there. Um, and then inside I've got it loaded with all our goodies. So I'm going to pull them all out and I'll show you what's in there. Everything laid out that I keep inside of my butt pack, the stuff we're going to be cooking with. I'm going to start off with my Katadin micro filter, or sorry, mini filter. It's a great little water filter. The water at the lake in the cottage is not potable, so we either have to boil it or we have to filter it or both. So I bring this every time we go up there. I've got this little silicone baking sheet that I've cut down to a quarter. It fits perfectly underneath the IKEA stove to help me protect the ground when I do the fire. Uh, it also works as a little bit of an ash plate. Um, and I can also use it to put my canister stove on, my Esbit stove on, whatnot, just to help protect the ground a little bit. And then I've got this little mini Coleman cutting board. Over here in this little black stuff sack, I keep two cutlery sets. There's going to be uh, two of us eating out of this kit this weekend. Everybody else will have a day hike kit, but we're going to keep this in here. And then uh, my little paring knife for cooking. And then a simple can opener, bottle opener. And my lovely hand carved spoon from Muskrat Jim. There is a noisy bird in there. Do you see him? It's a red cardinal. I think. Or an oriole, maybe. Let's see if we can see him without scaring him away. I'm getting this. I can't see what I've got on my screen. Oh, he's beautiful. I want to say an Oriole, not a Cardinal. There he goes. Cool. All right, back to cooking. So utensils, can opener, and then over here I've got my trusty old camp frying pan. It's nice and deep, which I really love, and it also is pretty thick, so it stands up to oil and a little bit of deep frying pretty well too. And then I've got my backpackers 
kit here. I have no idea what this is made of, who it's made by. I have no clue. I bought it about 15 or 16 years ago and it's holding up well even though it's pretty dented. I've got a lid. Inside of it I got my collapsible ladle. I keep this little cheap aluminum, I don't know, pie plate mixing bowl. I don't know. It came in one of those cheap little multi-pack things. It costs five bucks for a whole bunch of stuff. This is one of them, but it fits perfectly in here and I can use it for baking. So keep that in there. Pot lifter foldable spatula, scrub pad, a little bit of parchment paper which goes in here when I do baking and I can put my muffin mix or my biscuit mix or my bannock mix in here and then put it inside of the big pot in here and it works great. A little bit of aluminum foil, the smaller pot, the bigger pot and there's a couple different size Ziploc bags in there to keep them from clanging around and you can never have too many Ziploc bags and that comes with its own little dunk set here that I can use when I'm washing up and to let it dry. So that is everything that's in my GI butt pack for cooking in and with. Now we'll go into the black bag of deliciousness and I'll show you what we're going to be cooking. decided this. that now is the time to mill the lawn so I've come indoors and I'm going to show you what's inside the black bag of deliciousness. This is the food I'm bringing for this trip. Now this is not the bulk of the food. There's going to be lots of fresh vegetables, fresh fruit, there's going to be potatoes, onions, there's going to be meat, there's going to be cheese, bread, sandwich meat. We're going to have so much stuff. There's going to be goodies there, there's going to be everything we need. This bag is designed for two shore lunches and also a little bit of breakfast in case the boys decide that uh, bacon 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 will be our breakfast menu I need a little more goodness than that so I've got some stuff in here for that as well and then I've got a couple campfire treats in here so I'm gonna open it up and I'll show you There's everything that's in the black bag of goodness for this weekend first of all I've got this stuff sack over here it's got a whole bunch of extras in it I'm gonna show you that in a few minutes after we do all of this second of all I've got a little bit of aluminum foil in there we think we might do some foil pack dinners using some potatoes, onions, mushrooms, anything we can forge in the forest maybe as well. Um, and fish is really good in aluminum foil over the fire. So bag number one is my emergency breakfast stuff for just in case. I've got some grits. Well, it's not really grits actually, it's cornmeal. I realize they're not the same thing, but it's the closest I can get up here and I really like them. So some, we're going to call them grits or we can call it cornmeal. I've got a mixture here, it's basically oatmeal. It's regular rolled oats, it is steel cut oats, and then I've added in some quinoa, some nuts, some coconut, a uh, little bit of flaxseed, a little bit of chia seed, just to make it a little yummy. I think there's some wheat germ in there as well. Really flavorful for breakfast. And then emergency, we can use this for lunch, breakfast, dinner, whatever we need. Bacon, Spam. Nate, the outdoor outdoorsman, did a review of Bacon Spam a little while ago. And when I saw it in my grocery store last week, I couldn't resist. So that's coming with us. Thanks, Nate. Bag number two in here has got some communal stuff. We're going to make some cornbread. We've got this 100% white corn. It is pre-cooked white corn. So all we have to do is add water, a little bit of salt, make a little bread, and then fry them. Looks like you can also use this to do um, like a porridge. You could probably use it, not pancakes, you could use it to make cornbread. You could also use it to bread your fish with potentially. So there's a lot in there that'll get us through the weekend. And then for a campfire treat, once or twice maybe we'll do some muffins. We'll bake them over the fire, which is always fun. If we make them a little bit thick, we might be able to do them on a stick and make stick bread too. We'll see. That's just a little extra treat. And then shore lunch number one is assuming we catch fish. I've got some fish crisp. Cajun style. We're going to be going on a lake that has bass, walleye, muskie, perch, and lots of panfish in there. So this ought to be pretty good. I'm hoping for fresh fish. If not, we've got some tuna in water. And we've got a little bit of canned crab meat. And we're going to whip up some black beans and rice and mix that in there. Should make a pretty good meal. And then just a one pack, I might get another pack of this, buttermilk biscuits. This when you just add water and then you bake it. It doesn't take very long, 8 to 11 minutes. It's really, really good, really, really easy. And you can do it over a fire, just like Bannock as well. And meal number two is a little more elaborate. If we crush fresh fish, we'll add it to this as well. But I'm going to make a chowder. I'm going to 
try to make a chowder. I do this at home all the time, but not using these ingredients. I've never done it using a bunch of uh, canned fish before. Canned clams, yes, but the rest of the canned fish, nope, never done it before. So we're going to try this. This is a creamy potato soup from Shore Lunch. We really like it. It's got chunks of potatoes in it, as well as a really creamy, hearty soup. It does take 20 minutes to make, but with fresh fish, fresh shellfish, fresh white fish, whatever, that's okay because we need, want to cook the fish in there. In this case, we're going to use cooked stuff if we don't catch anything. So I've got a can of baby clams, a can of cocktail shrimp, one can of smoked mussels, two cans of smoked herring, and then we're going to supplement that with some pre-made bacon, potato, bacon, and seafood. Kind of hard to go wrong, I think. And then we all like vegetables in it a little bit. So I've got some hominy corn. I've got some dehydrated peas and some dehydrated onion in there that we can mix in, make it a little bit more hearty. And then I'm going to steal from the stash of fresh veg. I've got a carrot, I've got a celery, and I've got an onion. That's two ribs of celery in there, by the way. And then I can just chop those up really fine and throw those in there. And that should be really, really good. I've never tried this particular combination before using the instant soup and the uh, canned clams, but we'll see. I figure, really? How bad could it be, especially if we catch fish? yum -o. So those are the meals that I have got planned, and I'm going to now show you what's in my purple sack over here of extras to make the meals. I'm keeping in my little purple bag of extras. First of all, we got some extra canola oil for deep frying our fish, maybe doing some potatoes, maybe doing a fry up in the morning. Uh, we ran out once upon a time, so I always bring a little bit extra. Uh, ditto, I've got some chicken stock cubes in here in case we decided to make a different soup. We can make a fresh one. Each one of these goes with about three and a half cups of water. Bring it to a boil and voila, chicken stock. I'm gonna bring some fresh butter and some bacon fat. Both of those are really great for frying in as well. So between that, we get some really good flavor going on. And then I've got two different kinds of hot sauce here. We've got one big bottle that we can use that's uh, sriracha sauce. And then I've got this mixed bag over here that's got some Taco Bell hot sauce, some Louisiana hot sauce, some peri-peri sauce, a little bit of mustard, a little bit of soy sauce, just some extras. And then down here, lemon pepper seasoning for fish, black pepper, seasoned salt, salt and this is brown sugar with cinnamon so that can take care of breakfast stuff and then we got a little bit of powdered butter and a little bit of all-purpose flour some dehydrated onions this is a bag of dried cranberries and some pumpkin seeds and sunflower seeds it's great on oatmeal Ditto, a little pack of peanut butter. Takes great in oatmeal one of my favorite breakfasts right there that mix with that multi-grain um, oatmeal mix I showed you is fantastic. A little bit of table syrup, which I really like on my cornmeal gruel grub grits. Not grits, whatever. It tastes really good with maple syrup. And then because we're going with 12 and 13 year old boys who may not think of it, we've got some emergency coffee just in case we run out of the cottage and a little bit of emergency hot chocolate with some mini marshmallows in it for a special treat. Everyone has hot chocolate in their venture backpacks, but just in case we get a little carried away, I brought some extra. And then I've got one green cup. Ha! Not a member of the Green Cup Club yet, or the Green Cup Society yet. I haven't found my Stanley Adventure set, but one day I will. For now, this is my Green Cup, which it measures exactly one cup just below the rim, so that's really good for measuring stuff when we're cooking. And then just a couple of extra Ziploc bags. So that is my cooking and food setup for this weekend. And like I said, this isn't the bulk of it. There's probably going to be a beef stew one night. There's probably going to be hamburgers, hot dogs. There'll be lots of bread, lots of cheese, lots of cereal. We'll probably do pancakes maybe one morning. There's going to be bacon galore. There'll be fresh vegetables. There'll be potatoes. There'll be lots of fresh fruit. There'll be lots and lots of junk food. This is only for a couple trail meals, shore lunches, and uh, emergency breakfast, and special treats, and just in case. So that's my menu planning for this camping trip. If anybody has any ideas, any suggestions, any tips or tricks, I would love to hear them. Thanks for watching. I hope you're having a great